Hello Robotics Notes fans, happy February 19th. It is 1.56 a.m. It was not Sami Zayn Day, I was wrong. I would like to profoundly apologize. But with that said, life goes on, and we must load the data. The next day I take some time off in the afternoon to head back to Shibuya. This is my second time in Tokyo, but my first time traveling alone here. Akio seems suspicious, but I managed to dodge her questions. My destination? A certain hospital. Why? I heard either Yuki Fune is hospitalized there. At the nurse's station I asked for a room number. It's on the top floor in the corner of this giant building. I knock, but there's no answer. Upon knocking again, I'm still met with silence, so I slowly open the door. Our eyes meet. Sitting atop the bed is a lone girl staring at me. I steal myself and fully open the door. Can I come in? The girl, Iriyuki Fune, nods her head ever so slightly. The room is totally barren. There's one bed, a TV, and a shelf. She doesn't even have any flowers at her bedside. It's undeniable. The girl in the bed is Irie. The thawing process must have been a success. Before coming to the hospital room, the doctor in charge of her explained it to me in detail. She's in good health. She'll have to stay here for a while due to her prior disease, but the cold sleep left no after effects of note. Hmm? Irie exists. She's right there. She has a real body. She's breathing. She really exists. As someone who spent half a year with her AI equivalent, you can imagine just how profound this is for me. I want to try touching her. Her hair, her skin. I don't mean that in a lewd way. It's a pure desire to confirm that she's really there, that she exists. Touching her through the LCD monitor of my phone droid, Irie was always hard. She's actually 25 years old. Same age as Michi, Misane, and Mizuka-san. But she looks like a junior high school kid. It's all because she was that age when she entered cold sleep. I gotta say, meeting her like this is kinda anticlimactic. She might be the first human subject to experience artificial cold sleep in all of history, after all. I figured she'd be surrounded by scientists all day, all day, every day. Cords connected to her, gathering data. Um, Irie, or should I call her Irie-san, seems guarded, especially after my sudden visit. I have to remind myself. This isn't the same Irie-san that I knew for half a year. <coughs> of course, she wouldn't know me. Oh, sorry. Uh, how should I introduce myself? I happened to find you asleep in that device. I guess I'm the person who led to you waking up. Oh, this is kind of a weird self-intro. Oh, is that so? I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused you. No, not at all. Irisan's expression is dim. Maybe she didn't want to wake up. Almost ten years have gone by, but if they haven't found a cure for her illness yet, this was all pointless. Which would make me a real jerk for dragging her out of that thing. According to the doctor in charge, her mom's whereabouts are unknown. No family has come to visit. She's all alone in the world. The Irie son of today leapt forward ten years into a completely foreign world. When I think about it that way, the inside of my chest throbs with pain. What have I done? Our conversation fizzles out quickly. Of course it does. We don't share anything in common. Naturally, she doesn't have any of her AI memories. But even still, just wanted to check in on you. I know this must be really hard for you, but I'm glad you look well. Anyway, I'll be going now. Just, I'm sure I'm just bothering you, so I won't come back again. I do my best to force out a smile as I try to leave the room. Um, yeah? Could you tell me your name? Kaito Yashio. Kaito Yashio-san, thank you for coming. You're the first person to come visit me since I woke up. 
Can I come visit again? It's fine. I'll be okay. She doesn't want me to worry about her, eh? I should probably swing by every so often. One last thing. Do you know today's weather? Hmm? Arisan tilts her head. She looks out the window. Then back in my direction. Um, it looks like it's sunny outside. I see. Thanks. I'm able to endure it any longer. I leave the hospital room as though I'm running away from something. I'm back in Odaiba, but I don't feel like heading over to Akiho yet. On the way to the arena, I gaze out at the flow of cars from the bridge above the highway. Gejine, you there? Gejine. Weird, she always responds when I call out to her. I boot up Iruo on my phone droid. As far as I can tell, there's no sign of Gejine anywhere nearby. She's still linked to my phone droid. So she should be able to appear here, not just on Tanagashima. If nothing else, I know she was with me at least two days before I left. Hey, Gejine. Call out to her again, but she still doesn't respond. This has never happened before. Did they do more maintenance? Did she get erased? With the Kamijima reports public, the Committee of 300 may have pressured happiness for you to erase her. <laughs> it's possible. There was a time in which having Irie and Gijine around all the time was kind of a bother, but... Well, now that they're not here anymore, it's kind of lonely. <coughs> Guess I'll head back. I'm sure Akio is doing her best to assemble Model 2 right now. I should help out at least a little this time. I tuck away my phone droid and head for the expo arena. That reminds me. I wonder if they sell Skull in Tokyo. I'll swing by a convenience store on the way over. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is another episode of Boss Does League Animal Crossing. I will see you all in two days for another episode of Boss Does League Animal Crossing. But until then, no chill!